minute 22, Gondalic and Zegru, is he there? Dulles College, the dynasty continues. Blake Edwards. Good morning and a very warm welcome to Twickenham Stadium. It is the biggest day in schoolboy rugby today, the RFU Schools Finals, and we will be bringing you four matches live, the first of which is kicking off in under 15 minutes time. Beautiful day here, perfect rugby conditions, and we get things underway with the under 15 Vars final. It's Kenilworth versus Beach and Cliff. That'll be followed at 12.30 by the Under-15 Cup Final, Whitgift taking on Manchester Grammar School. At 2pm, we move to Under-18s. It's the Vars Final between Wirral Grammar and Langley School. And finally, the biggest match in schoolboy rugby in England. It's the Under-18 Cup Final, where Warwick School will take on Queggs Wakefield. Well, it's an action-packed day in absolutely stunning conditions. And joining me for all four matches will be Sam Howard. The head honcho of that dynasty of Dulwich back in 12, 13 and 14. Being here on a day like today, seeing the trophies up for grabs, Sam, must bring back some great memories for you. Oh, it does. Just watching the, the clips there, the goose bin, goosebumps come back. It's an absolutely fantastic day. It's the highlight of these boys. Um, sort of the dreams is always about playing at Twickenham. They've now got that as a reality. You can just feel the atmosphere building, the crowd are coming in, you see the schools walking in outside. It is a fantastic day. Those that are watching it on the live TV, hopefully it'll be maybe the first time they get to see the quality of the schoolboy rugby. I love being here. It's one of my favourite days of the year and I can't wait for the day to start. Well, I think uh, those thoughts are echoed around the country, whether you're watching at home, a very warm welcome to you. We have a great crowd gathering as well. The thing I get around today, whether it's the people out in the car park, the people in the stadium, or even us here, is the excitement. How do you possibly keep a lid on it for these schoolboys who are about to take place and take part in such an occasion, in such an arena today? The, all the old cliches come out, it's just another game. And, but we at Dulwich, we relish the excitement, and you, you, you can't just say it's another game. It's not, it's at Twickenham, it is a final. So you just say, you're just telling the boys, yep, yeah, enjoy it, relish it. It's fine to be excited, it's fine to be nervous. It'd be unnatural if you weren't, but ultimately it's 15 v 15 on a game out there and you've got to try and control the nerves. And it's as hard as for coaches as much as anything. You don't, you want to show the players that you're calm, it is just another game. If you keep getting fired up and lose it, then they're going to. So you, you have to try and stay calm. And that's the hardest thing because it's just as important, it's just as exciting for the coach as it is the players. So you try and do everything as normal as possible, but whilst also sort of acknowledging what a great achievement it is for those players and what a great sort of excitement for all of the fans as well. Certainly is, and we are just 12 minutes away from kickoff in the first match of today. Kenilworth versus Beach and Cliff, and we'll be bringing you all of the team news after the break. Back to Twickenham, it is RFU Schools Cup Finals Day. And the first match, six minutes away from kickoff, it's the under-15 Vars final, Kenilworth School taking on Beach and Cliff School. Let's take a look at the teams. Kenilworth unchanged from that semi-final victory against Queggs Penrith. They line up with Dylan Hunter, Kieran Behan and Dylan Barnett in the front row. Ben Tabra and Ethan Regan in the engine room. Ardell Yallop, Harry Keane and Josh Marston make up the back row. Alex Bradley and Will Wolvine are the halfbacks. Cameron Holden on the left wing. Sam Peppett inside centre. Fra Finn Yallop at 13. Harry Weaver 14. James Rome at 15. And Lee Castle is the head coach. Lots of changes for Beach and Cliff. 
They managed to get through that semi-final despite having five first-team players missing due to a school ski trip. Morgan Cope, Rufus Coleman, Devaney and Archie Maggs in the front row. Finley Blair, four, Tommy Gould, five. Mackenzie Graham, six, Josh Hayes, seven, and Jack Terrain is the captain at eight. Nathan Clark, nine, is scrum half. Ollie de Glanville at 10, Archie Robertson, 11, Daniel Boyle, 12, Will Morris, 13, Charlie Delaghi, 14, Josh Carter, 15, and Lee Sumsion is the head coach of Beach and Cliff School. Plenty of talent on the bench and plenty of changes to the bench for Beach and Cliff School. Unchanged once again for Kenilworth. Connor Poole, Sam Johnson, Alex Maynard, Luke Cooling, Sam Davey, Dominic Rogers, and Josh May. For Beach and Cliff, Kumbi Kassia, James Strangeways, Jacob Hobson, Jasper Spearman Armistead, Toby Hastings, Yuji Westmacott, and Harvey Jones are the replacements. Well, the crowd building here beautifully ahead of game number one of four Kenilworth versus Beach and Cliff. Well, Sam Howard, great news for Kenilworth. They had a brilliant semi-final win against Queggs Penrith and to be able to come into an occasion like this settled, unchanged, that'll do them the world of good. It's what you always want in a semi-final. Uh, you don't want to absolutely smash someone because actually that, that leaves you a little bit shy of good game competition, which is what happened to us one year. But an unchanged team is what you want. A settled side, no injuries. I'm very happy with that. Um, what's remarkable for me is that Beach and Cliff have made five changes, um, five, having five of your team away for the semi-final and still win pretty comprehensively shows what an amazing squad this school have got. Incredible strength in depth. Tough for those lads that do miss out though, of course. It's, it's a difficult decision for a coach, getting the balance between the boys being rewarded for their performance, but the lads who've worked hard throughout the season and have perhaps earned their place in that side on this big occasion today. I'm sure there was a very, very long discussion about what they do. Um, as you say, the boys that have gone out in the semi-final have performed, have got them to the final. However, it's not the five players' fault that I had to go because I think it was because of the change of the game because of the snow, so it's not their fault. So it's a real tough one, I'm sure. There was a long, long discussion and the reasons were made clear to all boys and probably more importantly, parents. <laughs> So many people to keep happy, not just the 22 in the squad. Glorious playing conditions here today. And really, on days like this, that might well be the highlight of some of these boys' playing careers. It, it doesn't get a lot better, really. No, it will be the highlight of probably 99% of them. There may be one or two out there that are lucky enough to go on and make it as a professional rugby player. But for the majority of them, this will probably be the only time they get to play at Twickenham. And it is every schoolboy's dream to get here, play at home, the rugby. The pitch looks glorious. Oh, the sun's incredible. now starting to spread across it. Perfect conditions. Hopefully, we're in for four great games of rugby. And the boys can go out and enjoy themselves and express themselves. They're obviously very good teams. They've got to the final. And you just hope, as a coach, that the boys go out and don't freeze and they actually play the way that they can and that they've worked so hard for all year. Because they do work hard. This is way back in the pre-season all the way to now. You can see some shots of the players about to run out onto the hallowed turf. And here come the players. Out of that entrance that so many world-class players have come out of in the past to take their well-deserved place on the Twickenham turf. It is Kenilworth versus Beach and Cliff. And of course, we've got some teams with rich histories Coming up later, we've got Whitgift, Warwick, we've got Queggs, Wakefield, but these two, it's a first major final performance, and that is really a remarkable achievement. I think that's the beauty of this school's cup, that you've got schools uh, that have never been here before. Obviously, the main competitions, we've got Queggs and Wakefield, that are, always seem to be here. But the vast competitions, we've got two schools here that have never been here, and I think the competition is run brilliantly by the RFU. Uh, the fact that we've got four games on Twickenham in the week that actually England are playing here on Saturday, I think it's just testament to the value that the RFU put on schoolboy rugby. So hopefully we're in for an absolute cracker out here now. Game number one of the day. We have Beach and Cliff in the yellow and navy hoops attacking the try line to your left. Kenilworth in the sky blue receiving and attacking the try line away to your right. Myself, Dave Rogers, and Sam Howard talking you through all of the action. 
in this under 15s final. Number eight, Jack Terrain takes on a lot of kicking duty, not just from restarts, but also penalty goals and clearance kicks as well. A very versatile back rower, and he gets us underway. Will Wolvine puts boot to ball for the first time. Josh Carter will receive that from fullback and have a little bit of open space to run into before he's brought down by Finn Yallop. Nathan Clark. And the yards made early on here by Beach and Cliff. Of course, so important to settle the nerves in these early stages. Yeah, Beach have kept, have kept the ball well here. They will keep the ball what you see in this game. Big challenge there from Kenilworth. Looking to exert themselves physically, but they've conceded the penalty. Blue one, roll. Yeah, Beach and Cliff have kept the ball really well there. Kenner will keep the ball to them. What you'll find under 15 level, actually, if you watch the under 18 states, the big difference is how far they kick the ball. And Beach, Beach and Cliff have kept the ball really well there. There you go, yellow. So there's your well, Beach and Cliff will have the first line out. If you're new to under 15s rugby, then the line outs are uncontested. There is lifting in the lineouts, but this is a great opportunity for Beach and Cliff to get some good possession in the midfield. Rufus Coleman Devaney is the hooker. Throws it low, but now they have the opportunity to drive. Nathan Clark waits at the back, but the forward pack still going forward before it breaks up. Two metres short now for Beach and Cliff inside the first couple of minutes here at Twickenham. Second turnover is good. But that's been hacked away by Kenilworth and the pressure is relieved for now. Picked up by Ardell Yallop and he's isolated. Support now does arrive. Josh Marsden, the captain, takes them up to the halfway line. And that the first test passed for Kenilworth. Oh, lovely dummy inside by Dylan Hunter. Front row forwards at this level. Doing so well to carry the ball. Oh, that's a big shot on Kieran Beard, though. Thank you, Yellow. Alex Bradley, the scrum half. Finds Will Wolvino has a little dart himself up over the 10 metres. Kenilworth sweeping forward here. Remember, their own line was under pressure less than a minute ago. Will Wolvine again. It's an excellent one on one tackling here by Beach and Cliff. Will find weights, but they go the blind side instead. Dylan Hunter gets the offload away and finds Cameron Holden. Kenilworth into the 22 for the first time in this final. Barnett. Slowed down temporarily. The offload goes to ground and the pressure comes on. Beach and Cliff have turned that over. But the referee brings them back. Excellent response from Kenilworth there, Sam. Yeah, it's been a great four opening four minutes. Both teams have kept the ball well. As you say, Kenilworth right on their line defending. 
broke away and just kept the ball, kept the ball, kept the ball. A couple of nice breaks, using the width, and now they're going to be in a fantastic position. Because as you said earlier, the lineouts are uncontested, so they're definitely going to win it. And once they get a drive going, it's going to be tough to stop. So let's see if Beach and Cliff can hold out Kenilworth on their own line like Kenilworth can hold out them. Big moments of pressure here for Beach and Cliff. One scoring opportunity missed for them. Now it's their turn to defend one. Line outs one. Beach and Cliffs counter drive working well, but it comes free for Kenilworth. Brought down three meters short. Bradley has to dig for it a little bit. Will Wolvine drifts across, darts himself. Well, Beach and Cliff forced the penalty. And that's a big boost for both sides in, in the opening six minutes here, certainly defensively. Yeah, great defence. That's the second of a couple of real big hits that we've seen from Beach and Cliff in defence. I'm sure we'll see many more throughout the day. But yeah, good defence from both teams on their line. I'd like to see this, this Wolvine, he's had a couple of attacks at the, um, at the line, which is good to see, keeping the defence honest. But really strong defence from Beach and good tackle and then over the ball, winning the penalty. So. I think both coaches will be pretty happy with the attack of both sides and the defence so far. It's been a cracking start. Six and a half minutes gone. Our clock is linked in with the referee's watch, so it'll give you an approximate idea. But don't get too excited when the clock turns red as Beach and Cliff lose that one. But the penalty's been given for a high tackle. Richard Hall eagle eyed on that one. Some of the referees are really clamping down on at the moment as well. Very much so. You see it in the senior game, but at schoolboy level especially, really, really hot on high tackles, which is good. You want the boys getting into good habits, tackling low, so and obviously with injuries as well. So you will see anything around the shoulder height, the referees will generally good. I mean, talk about the players and the coaches. The referees in these games are so important because we often find the referees come from they're excellent quality referees, but they're used to doing adult games, so they can be sometimes a bit picky in these finals. But Richard Horton started brilliantly. I think he's only given two penalties, and they were both spot on. You want the game free flowing. The kids will make a few mistakes. The last thing we want is the referee blowing up all day long. Jack Teray, the number eight, finds touch and beats a cliff back in the Kenilworth half. Still nil nil. Little bit incidents in and around both try lines Coleman Devaney finds his target and Beach and Cliff can go again all offside drop a metre, drop a yard so with the line-out rule about being uncontested at this age group, it's great that sort of... It, it, oh, just, oh, he's got away with one there. Oh. So it's great that sort of you get the, uh, the youngsters getting used to lifting without the pressure of competing. But what it does mean that often you find that the opposition just stand at the back of the line-out and just fly onto the scrum, onto the fly half, and they just get nailed. So it's good to see the referee making sure they do stay on side and give the fly half a little bit of time. Time. So I'm glad he picked that up because it doesn't often get done at this level. All smiles on the Beach and Cliff bench. Oh, Why oh. not? They're back in the 22 oh, yeah. here. Broken, let's go. Here's De Glanville. Tackled by his opposite number, Wolvine. Beach and Cliff pick and go. And this time they go to the blind side. Suggestion of an overlap there if it had gone. <laughs> this time they do go open. Archie Mags is the big number three. Now we'll see some width on it, breakthrough, and that'll be the opening try. 
An excellent finish as well. Spotted the gap at first receiver. And Ollie de Glanville gets the opening score to make it Beach and Cliff 5, Kenilworth 0. Absolutely superb try. Beach and Cliff keep the ball four, five, six phases. But what's really good here, I think it's the number 12. Daniel Boyle is here. He takes it to the line, commits the defender. De Glanville then runs hard straight line like his dad always used to and that's a great finish but the the 12 that you see him he really takes it to the line he threatens fly halves jammed in that's a lovely pass really well made by daniel boyle the center there really good rugby coaches always go on about the players take it to the line commit defenders nice and simple putting to the through the hole terrain converts to make it seven nil End-to-end -end stuff here, 10 minutes gone. Let's take another look at this. Did a beautiful job to draw in those two defenders. Absolutely, and that's what you want from your players. If you can suck in two defenders, make one of the defenders jump out of the line, which is what Wilbine's done, unfortunately, there. And then Duglambo just picks a nice, simple line running straight under the post. Kenilworth get us back underway. Caught uncontested by Turian. Kenilworth captain, oh, and this time the try scorer driven backwards but gets a lovely offload away to Finn Blair. No, Blue! No! Back you go, Blue! Thank you, three. Thank you. Beach and Cliff back inside the 22, but not scared to run it out as another big hit comes in. Inside. That's been half charged down, so Kenilworth will pick it up about 30 yards out. It's well chased by Beach and Cliff. Some big hits going in from both sides out there. Everyone's getting stuck in. It's great to see. It's at the 15th, this. It's unbelievable, honestly. And so when we see the um, Whitgift and Manchester come out of the game after this, there will be some big, big boys involved in that as well for under 15s. Kenilworth. And five meters outside the 22, looking for an instant response from that to Glanville try. It's a lovely step inside, but really a lot of options inside it. Now some numbers start to come right. Marsden, the captain, looks to Wolvine, who's slowed down. Richard Cliff doing well to stifle the momentum of Kenilworth. Couple of numbers blind, and that's where it goes. Ardal Yallop, fantastic ball carrier, finds Finn Yallop, will go for the corner, but he's just bundled into touch. That 6 and 13 Yallop axis links together to great effect for Kenilworth. Oh, Yallop spotted there was room down the blind side. Brilliant, went down there, super offload, and then that's an excellent try saving tackle from. Graham there, but really real well spotted by the Kenilworth players, seeing that there was no one at home down the blind side, and they've gone down there and almost got another try there. But superb defence, and now they've just got to get away from the try line here. Mackenzie Graham, the six. He's one of the players who's come in from the semi-final. Carry it up to 10 metres from their own try line. It's spilt out of the side, and the referee says it's gone forward. That's the gamble of trying to run it inside your own 22. Yeah, unfortunate there. Obviously, a well worked move that they're looking at. Oh, this is the hit. Great hit there from Tabara. Spotted from that angle there, you see the Glamour, he sort of comes from the, block, the sort of blind slot of the uh, defence there, so he literally comes just round the corner. Very clever try, the more you watch it, you see how intricate and clever these players are. Kenilworth putting the pressure on at the scrub. Marsden goes and keeps going. Beach and Cliff calling out for defenders on their right-hand side, but Kenilworth go blind. Harry Weaver waits on the blind side. Tackle now, 
Again, some desperate try line saving tackles there. The boys constantly putting their bodies on the line, which you'd expect from them all day like today. But again, Kenilworth, Kenilworth keeping the ball well, attacking tight to the um, Beaton defence. Wonder if they've got a little bit of width on this. Maybe they might get a little bit more joy. A watch for Josh Master, the number eight, in that red cap to go again. So there's a bit of space for him to run into on the blind side. Swift wheels left. Roxy Robertson, the beach and cliff left winger. Seems to have a lot of try line to defend there. As you say, Marsden is a good strong carrier, so yeah, could well be we see him coming down this right hand side with Coach. the right hand winger. Maybe get a good two on one out of here. Set! Not done! <coughs> The eight does go, but passes off to Bradley instead. Kenilworth under the sticks. Eight metres from the try line. 15 minutes gone here. A quarter of the way through this under-15s final. There goes Marston towards the try line, over the try line. And he gets Kenilworth off the mark. And sometimes you just need the brute power of a number eight. Yep, and nothing left short of what they deserve. They're fully in this game, they've had a lot of possession, they've had a lot of territory, and they're good for that try. What I've noticed about this Kenilworth type, when they do go into contact, they pump their legs, they get through the tackle. So here's an example of Mars doing it, doing it here as number eight, a big, strong boy, he's going to take some stop, stop him. But the 13, I think it was Yallop, when he initially took the ball from the scrum, it looked as if he was getting held up, but those extra leg drive gave him that crucial extra couple of yards. with the easiest of conversions to level things up and he does exactly that 16 minutes gone it's 7-7 game on cracking game I have to admit I was a little bit worried thinking crikey Beechin have won a semi-final without five of their best players if you put them back in they might be extremely strong I'll say they are but this is a super game of rugby so far and could go either way a little bit of a gap there as we see it from that fantastic angle. Josh Marston didn't need a second invitation. We are one converted try apiece. It's a great reception from Kenilworth to get straight out of their 22. And Regan tidies things up. Wait, 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 wait. Carter lets that one bounce and it could come back Kenilworth's way and it does exactly that. It's Yallop again. Offloads out the back door as well. Beautiful play from the blindside flanker. Finn Yallop. It's taken back towards the 10 metre line. Bernardo Yallop carrying on his semi final form where really he was so instrumental for Kenilworth. Bradley. That's Will Wolvine. That's offside from Beach and Cliff. Lucky to get away with that one, perhaps. Yeah, I think maybe the referee is just giving, right, your schoolboys, I'll give yep. you a benefit of doubt. I think that if it was a high level, it could probably have been at least 10 yards, if not a yellow. But you don't want to see yellow cards given out at this Z. level. Can so I, I think that's sensible referee. Yellow. I think we yellow. just saw, again, coach's mantra. The kick chase is so important. Yallop never gave up on that kick. You never know with this crazy shaped ball. You see here, the ball can go absolutely anywhere. Cracking chase power and strength to get him away from those two defenders and then here's a lovely little offload out the back and again we see we will see some superb skills throughout the day and I'm sure we'll see how skillful these players can be what a great position they're now in Arnold Yallop was man of the match for Kenilworth in the semi-finals we've had a substitution Jasper Spearman Armistead is on in the second row for Finn Blair for Beach and Cliff Bullvine Finds Finn Yallop. Once again, driving those legs. It's being held up, but they're still going forward. 
towards the try line, two meters short. Beach and Cliff having to add extra weight to that one. And there's space on the blind side if they can get the ball there. So many bodies committed to that breakdown now, right under the sticks. But the ball goes back Beach and Cliff's way. Tense moments for Beach and Cliff here. Yeah, again, another big, strong carry from Finjal up there at 13. The rest of the team got in behind him, but they couldn't quite get that Simple ball over the try line, so it's a collapse more, and that's why Beechin have got this scrum. So, again, excellent defence from Beechin, but Kenilworth would be very, very pleased with the start they're making. They're carrying hard, and they're posing some problems for this Beechin defence. Responded incredibly well to getting a score Five. down. Set. Kenilworth. Nathan Clark with the foot in. They don't take the gamble of carrying this time, but that's not the best clearance kick. Harry Weaver receives, steps inside. Acres of space on the left-hand side, but once again, Kenilworth keep it up the jumper for the time being. Wolvine, Marsden. Oh, tackled extremely well. Leg lifted and driven back. And that's one way to stop him pumping those legs. Will Wolvine. Now a little bit of width on it from Kenilworth. Back into the 22 through Tabera. Marsden puts his head down and makes another three or four yards after receiving the tackle. Wolvine. Now tackle. Slowed down well on this occasion and Kenilworth having to reset. Ben Tabra putting hands on it there. Uh -oh. And that's been intercepted. It's now going to be a foot race for the line. And Beach and Cliff could release the pressure in the best possible way. That is a real sucker punch for Kenilworth. But Beach and Cliff snatch it, go all the way. And Charlie Delaghi puts his side back into the lead. And how often do we see that? The pressure building and building for Kenilworth. Then Beach and Cliff snatch it and take the lead. Wow, Ken Kenilworth were building the pressure. They've had all of the possession and territory for about the last sort of 10 minutes. Fair play, the wing has done brill brilliantly there at gathering it in, showed great pace to get away, but completely against the run of play. Kenilworth now just got to almost forget that play how they have been. They've been really good with the ball in hand. Yes, Ironically, I was actually just saying they, they need to play with a little bit more width, actually, because they're now. sucking those beach and players. There is space out wide if they move it, but when you do move it, you've got to execute well. And that is the risk that you, that you take. But what a superb finish. This conversion there from Terrain. But let's have another look at this. Charlie Delaghi, versatile back. He actually played at nine in that semi-final win. Well, he enjoyed that one, didn't he? An 80-metre try at Twickenham. That's something he'll remember forever. Of course he will. Of course he will. He gathered the ball in really well. So just really interesting to see how Kenilworth respond to this because they've been playing brilliantly so far in this first 22 minutes of the game. Stay back here. There's Mackenzie Graham, three in the hands and getting the offload away and Beach and Cliff growing in confidence since that interception try. Archie Robertson, the left winger. To Glanville. Okay, pass the advantage. Blue. Offside. Back he goes. Beach and Cliff back the in the Kenilworth half, which has been a rarity for the last 10 minutes or so. There. Big ball carriers about to hit their straps. Ball in hand, they do look dangerous. Back towards the 22. Bailed into touch. They just look slightly slicker when they're looking to put some width on it. Beach and Cliff. 
Yeah, the, 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 as you say, the hands are just a little bit more natural. They're able to just take and give a little bit more with more fluidity than Kenilworth seem. It's amazing momentum in any sport, isn't it? It was all with Kenilworth. That score suddenly, Beecham looked really good from the kickoff. Some excellent hands. They're looking to offload whenever they can. They've just got to try and keep in off the touchline, but it's a good tackle. But I think there was an offside, so they've got either a chance for three, three points or they might go for the line out when you've guaranteed the ball. But a real turnaround in sort of the swing of the game over the last five minutes. It's been a front row replacement for Kenilworth. Dylan Barnett has been replaced by Sam Johnson. That's three off 17 on. Around about 24 minutes gone in this opening fixture. Played 30 minutes each way in under 15. Peach and Cliff with a guaranteed possession are going to go for touch. I think they're actually, I think Beach are actually into what win there is, is going towards them. So maybe he thought that he couldn't, couldn't take the three points, wouldn't want quite get there. So the safety of guaranteeing your own ball from the line out here. Of course. I'm so used to watching senior rugby with players booting it over from their own <laughs> half. That tough to remember particularly with the physicality that we're watching an under 15s game here tremendous standard here in this under 15s final match one of four today live from Twickenham Beach and Cliff 12-7 to the good and back in the kennel with 22 Archie Robertson comes in looking for work but he's stopped dead by the Kenilworth defense and a dummy from De Glanville Trying to make things happen, and Josh Carter, the fullback. Oh, excellent yards made there, ably supported by Mackenzie Graham. And now Beach and Cliff can put a little bit of width on it, but that pass not the best, and allows Kenilworth to recover. to touch well shepherded there by Kenilworth good defense there but again lovely timing of the pass from the beach and backs committing the defender drawing them in holding on to that ball and delaying the pass and putting the player away but again Kenilworth managed to scramble and get the guy into touch hopefully look, there's an injury down there hopefully it's not too serious it's the last thing you want boys going off in the final because of injuries if you just joined us a very warm welcome this the first under 15 final of the day, Beach and Cliff 12, Kenilworth 7. Beach and Cliff opened the scoring. Three to Glanville hitting a lovely line and getting himself under the sticks. Kenilworth responded through the number eight Marsden. Brutal run from five meters out. Unstoppable. That was converted to make it seven apiece. And the Beach and Cliff up to the cosh managed to find an outlet through Charlie Delaghi went 80 meters uh, from an interception yes. that conversion was missed yes. that is where we stand yes. okay. Cliff 12 Kenilworth 7 Sam Howard alongside me it's been a proper cup final so far isn't it it's been really enjoyable really enjoyable which often so these the um, under 15 cup class games are nearly always the best they're really scrapping at it the quality of it if you think that this is not even the main competition yep. the quality that we're seeing out there is absolutely outstanding if you've got so if there's relatives or whatever that are watching and don't often see schoolboy rugby, I think they'd be astounded at how good these boys are. Um, as you say, a, a breakaway try which is given Beach in the lead. Uh, apart from that, both teams are in it and it can go either way. What's interesting, they're in, um, Beach are in a lovely position five yards out. We've seen both teams have good line-out drives. But I think what we'll see later in the game is, especially with Queggs, the patience that the under-18 teams have at those line out drives was when they're in these positions they will probably score the, these under 15s they just lack a little bit of patience and the scrum half's passing it out yeah. a little bit maybe too early if they just keep going keep going very hard to stop the line out drive um, but obviously they're still very very inexperienced these under 15 but what we'll see later yeah, in the game in this position the senior teams are going to probably score we just had the full schedule of matches up there today. This is the first, the under-15 Vars final. 
followed by the under 15 cup final Whitgift versus Manchester Grammar School then the under 18 Vars kicks off at 2 p.m which is Wirral Grammar School versus Langley and that's one I'm really really looking forward to thoroughly enjoyed both of those teams in the semi-final and then finally Warwick School versus Queggs Wakefield it's 4 p.m it's the under 18 cup final and even though they're separated by many miles they seem to have well they've almost been on a collision course it's under 15's level and maybe this is the, the last chapter in that particular story so that's one not to be missed as Kenilworth win the line out with around about four minutes of this first half to go Archie Robertson gathers Oh, lovely work from Will Morris into space, into the 22. Looks for the offload, but can't quite find it. And now the full width of the pitch. The beach and cliff to work with, but that one goes to ground. Knocked on. Knocked on. Oh, that's unfortunate. It was a superb pickup from the winger there. On his toes, he's picked it up, gone for the corner, but again, great scram scrambling from Kenilworth. But again, there you see, as we talked about, sort of the power of these boys, everything else looks so strong, but the kicking is the real big thing yeah and so he's kicked it hasn't really got a lot of distance and you're inviting Beecham straight back onto them and it's actually the position that Beecham were in when they actually scored their second try they kicked it they didn't go far and they were still defending on their 22 obviously they got that counter attack at what point does that start to change in terms of getting the, the distance on the kick is, is it a fast curve when you move between under 15s and under 18s or? No, no. It sort of comes around now. You're, if, if we were a year on, the under-16 boys are really starting. That's when they're starting to get the maturation. They're kicking the ball a lot more. They're training a lot more. And they do put in a lot of time. And that's when you start seeing the boys really start to kick the ball with distance. And who knows, in the next game, there may be uh, the week of Lahav. Um, they may have some big kickers, but it's not as regular. Um, and, and as you say, by, by the time they're under-18, they're all they're smashing the ball miles. Turnover's good. Yeah. Oh, that's been turned over by Beach and Cliff. Real opportunity to counter attack now. Will Morris in that red scrum cap. He's held up and slowed down well. Good work by the back row of Kenilworth, but it's still with Beach and Cliff. And away, Blue, no. It's Archie Robertson on the left hand side. To Glanville. Finds Mackenzie Graham out of the back door. And that's been turned over by Be uh, sorry by Kenilworth. Good pressure. Beach and Cliff trying to force it wide, but force it is exactly what they did. For the two minutes of the first half remaining, it's that risk reward, isn't it? They got two offloads that came off. They went for that third one. If it come off, they were probably away on the right, and it just didn't, just didn't come off. But this age group is great to see them going for those offloads going for the high risk he just didn't quite come off but it's fantastic to see them doing it and they've actually got the ball back now anyway on. Kenilworth on. holding on for a little bit longer than referee Horton would have liked yeah, he was ten. they've actually gone quickly here carried forward by Archie Mags Just to get his hands on the ball the big prop forward Kenilworth, they've played 29 minutes of good rugby here. They're behind on the scoreboard. The last thing they'll want to do is concede just before half-time. Yeah, the penalty count's just starting to creep up for Kenilworth. They've got a good defensive system. They've just got to try and back it. They've probably given away maybe five penalties in the last five minutes. And this beach cliff score. They've got an all-rounded game here. They've got some big, powerful ball carriers, but they've got some lovely handling in the backs as well. So give them the easy ball and sort of Kenilworth have just defended now for the last sort of six, seven minutes. Can they hold out for these last few minutes on their try line here? Especially when Beechin have to win the ball here because it's uncontested line outs. But this might well be the last phase of play. Oh, it's been knocked on at the base of the line out. That's a real let off here for Kenilworth. do get guaranteed possession but you have to catch the ball such a shame such a shame there's been very very few unforced errors in this game which has been fantastic both coaches will be very pleased with that your time what's that your time. You're desperate for that one one play that you've practiced that you've worked on let's get it right now 
and it just goes astray. But that's going to happen. Uh, <laughs> these kids are 14, 15. They're going to make mistakes. Fine. Set. It's a good shove from Peter Cliff at the scrum as well. Comes out, leaves it out. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Hi, Trevor. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Vic. Fine. <laughs> Set. Contrary to popular misconception, it is Dave Rogers and Sam Howard bringing you commentary live from Twickenham today as Kenilworth look to clear their lines. And that brings us to half time. A fascinating opening 30 minutes here in the under 15 Vars final. Three tries shared between the two teams. 12-7, a very exciting second half in prospect, Sam Howard. Yeah, really looking forward to it, really enjoying the game so far. Two good teams. Beaching for me at the moment, just have a little bit more of an all-round game. They're mixing up with the forwards, but their handling seems to be just a little bit slicker than Kenilworth. Kenilworth have looked like they've got players, individuals that can break a game up. Both Yallet boys, Marsden at number eight and captain, very strong ball carrier. And I like Wolvie bossing the shirt at fly half. Plenty more to look forward to and plenty more analysis from Sam Howard. After the break, it's Kenilworth School 7, Beach at Cliff 12. Back to Twickenham. We've just had the kickoff of the second half of the under 15 Vars final. Beach and Cliff knocked on straight from the kickoff, so Kenilworth trailing 12 points to seven, a straight on the attack. Be joined myself, Dave Rogers, a multiple winner here at Twickenham in the Schools Cup, Sam Howard. And Sam, important that Kenilworth get their hands on the ball and do the things that they did so well in the first half. They did so, so many good things. They were just undone by a bit of fortune. Uh, a ball went awry. Beecham grabbed it and ran 80 metres. But apart from that, they played really well. They looked after the ball well. Handling could be a little bit slicker, but he's away here. Lovely turn of pace there by Sam Pippin. He can go over, and he does. Apologies, it was Finn Yallop. Goodness me. He and Ardell Yallop combined so well in the first half, and Finn Yallop, just over a minute of the second half gone, and that is a brilliant finish by the outside centre. As we talked about uh, at half-time, Kenilworth have the individual players that can create moments of absolute greatness, and that's exactly what Yallop's done there. He's broken through three tackles. He's a big, strong, quick runner who's got away. And now, as uh, again, it once again really put this game in the balance. Perfect start for Kenilworth, just what they wanted. If Beecham had got a score and got a, or two scores ahead, it may have been tough to get back from, but now absolutely perfect position. Important kick this now. Will Wolvine with a chance to put Kenilworth into the lead for the first time in this final. And he does exactly that. Two from two off the tee. Kenilworth 14, Beach and Cliff 12. So one, two, gets through two there, breaks another one. One more to finish, superb finish from Yalop. He's had a real good game. And it's nice to see Kenilworth just move the ball a little bit wider. I do think there's a bit of space out there if they can go wide and they execute well. It's beat four defenders there. Remarkable finish from the outside centre. The only touch they've had in this half before this was that knock on from the kickoff. So, great start from Kenilworth as Beach and Cliff hammer through once again. Talent all over the field here in this under 15 Vars final. Everyone queuing up to the right hand side of the breakdown for Beach and Cliff, and that's where they go. Nearly through the gap once again. Another lovely straight line from him, but the timing of the pass was fantastic from Mackenzie Graham. It's Kenilworth player down on the edge of the 22. I think if the ball goes left, they'll have to stop play. 
Sam Davey has come on as a replacement for Kenilworth and he's been taken off by the medical staff on the far side. Play continues and Beach and Cliff are inside the Kenilworth 22. Now they do go left to Glanville. Finds Morgan Kopu. Sticks on a big right port, takes them to under the sticks. Good response this from Beach and Cliff. That's a short ball to Will Morris, who goes for the corner and puts Beach and Cliff back into the lead. Well, both 13s really showing their quality early in the second half. Good patience from Beach and Cliff. And Will Morris showing similar power to Finn Yallop and putting Beach and Cliff back into the lead. What a seesaw final this is. Again, it's another super line from Will Morris. We've seen it a lot today from Beach and Cliff's goal. Ball carrier holds onto the ball just that fraction longer. It sucks in the defender, and then someone comes on a good hard line. But what's so impressive there, they must have held the ball for over 10 phases, but we're used to seeing that on the television with the Premiership clubs and internationals. But these boys are looking after the ball, running through the phases, going wide, hitting it up. Version has got the win just behind him, and he's split the uprights. And a superb conversion there. So yeah, that's an absolutely superb try there. Look at that. He's hit the ball at pace. Nice straight line. I've been impressed with Will Morris throughout the day. He's taken a couple of balls off his toes. He's run hard. Very good, very good young player. Just what the coaches would have wanted after conceding that early try. Really, that's exactly what you want from a 13, isn't it? Absolutely. Run hard, run straight, have the power, get the timing right. Often the kids, they get the timing wrong. These Beecham boys, they're getting the timing of their runs right every single time. There's, there's exactly what you don't want as a, as a coach. You want to just get, catch the kick off, look after the ball. But now Kenilworth are in a superb position to have a good attacking position again. Converted try apiece in the second half. So Beecham Cliff back five points in front because Mackenzie Graham with the knock on he's been a little bit unlucky with both of those kickoffs I think there was a breakdown in confusion between him and Archie Mags sorry breakdown in communication should I say Clark Ollie de Glanville he waits and comes up as Will Wolvine gets it on the wraparound a nice little intricate move then, but I think if he'd moved that pass, the move had done the job, then sucked in the defenders, and they had space if actually, if Wolverine had passed the ball there. Josh Marston with the carry. I'd like to see him perhaps taking the ball at pace a little bit more. He finds the yards once he's found the contact, but they've gone quickly here, the referee. Gotta bring them back though. Yeah, you're completely right. I think that's another slight difference between the two teams. Kenilworth have got good runners, but a lot of the time they're taking it from static and then trying to build momentum. Whereas the Beecham boys, when they're taking the ball, they're coming onto the ball at real pace and they're difficult to stop. Oh, that's a mistake. They haven't found touch with that clearance seven, kick. Seven, seven. It's booted back with interest. Plenty of distance on that one, but doesn't quite find touch. So Kenilworth can chip over the top. Nice chip into space as well. It's well recovered by Beach and Cliff. Back three, Blue. Clark finds Mackenzie Graham and makes it stick this time. Away, Blue. Away, Blue. By Finn Yallop. Good pressure from him. Beach and Cliff get themselves in a little bit of trouble here. Coleman Devaney with the carry. Is made and towards the 10 meter line. Oh, rushing out of the line again for Kenilworth, and it's working at the moment that time. It was Dylan Hunter.
Tommy Gould for Beecher Cliff. Again, though, they're going through the phases here. They're not necessarily making the metres they'd like, but it's good patient stuff in midfield from Beach and Cliff. I think it's great from both teams, and there's the opening. Gorgeous offload. It's Will Morris once again. And they've made 20 metres there. Patience in the middle of the park, and then taking advantage of the gap that appears. Lovely feet from De Glanville. Looking for the pass, it's not there, but he stays aware. They're into the 22, but he's lost it forward. Back from blue. And it's kicked clear. That's one for the winger to chase, but it's going to go out on the far side, so the referee won't bring them back for the advantage. But regal feet there from Young de Glanville. Oh, that was absolutely magical. But again, leading up to it, there was a lovely offload from the captain, Tyrion, I think, which then created the space. Beecham looks so happy on the ball. They go through the phases, they can mix it, they're carrying off nine, they're going wide, they're looking to offload. And then you've got the Glanville pulling the strings and with some lovely feet there. But again, Kenilworth has scrambled really well, got back. Substitution seven yellow. But again, Beecham have the ball now. And look so happy with it. They don't look like they're gonna give it away. But I've been again, I've been impressed with Kenilworth's defence. Up until that offload, they looked happy defending. Beach it didn't look like we're going to break them. It's the only the offloads that are doing that. He was just warming up. Had some frustrated looks there on the Kenilworth bench, but they're only a score behind. Just to show that they've got plenty of quality to get themselves back into this one. To Glanville finds Will Morris, second half try score. That's a rare handling error in open play for Beach and Cliff. Another opportunity for Kenilworth to get hands on the ball in midfield. Tackle! Tackle release, Yellow! It's all a little bit static for Kenilworth. Once again, it's almost as though their ball carriers are waiting for the contact before they explode. So as we talked again, just the slight difference between the two teams. They've got good ball carriers. They just need to hit the ball at pace, get their timing right, and then they can get in behind the beach and the fence. But they're in a nice position. They've got the right in the middle of the pitch here. They can attack either way. As we've seen, Marsden can carry from the base. Perfect attacking position. Lots of space on that right-hand side. Six. Interesting to see what they do here. Is the voice of Sam Five. Howard, three time winner here at Six. Twickenham and Dulwich College, now director of rugby at Hanson College, head coach of Old Altamians. Bit of space at the blind side now for Kenilworth. Once again, Beach and Cliff stay, stay. making the tackle and committing bodies to try and suffocate that narrow Kenilworth offence. Much better carry in there. Extra pass. And away, yellow. No way around Beach and Cliff at the moment. Just under 20 minutes and this under 15 Vars final remaining. Towards the halfway line now. Time for Kenilworth to show a little bit of patience. Marsden, the captain, up to the halfway line. Taking the ball at pace that time and making an extra six or seven metres as a result. Ardell Yallop getting past the first man again. Well, I'd be saying get him on the ball. Sam Pippett goes. Both the Yallop boys really causing damage with ball in hand. And there's the pass just overrun. And now Beach and Cliff can counter attack. There's acres of space for them to run into here. And the offload's gone to Glanville with quick hands. Gets it to Morris. But Kenilworth can recover just with that momentary slowing down of Beach and Cliff. Away, Blue. But again, looking comfortable on the ball again. Not panicked. It's a good position for them now. He's knocked on by Yellow. Knocked on by Yellow at the base. See Graham's there. Knock on from Yellow. Again, Richard, that all came down. Kenworth had yellow. the ball. They nine looked good. Yellow. It was a good break by Yallop. He's a strong boy. What I'd love to see is once he gets into open space, if he can get that ball in two hands, he may be able to move the ball before contact rather than look for the offload. 
but he did brilliantly. But then the timing of that run just wasn't quite there. The runner got there before the scrum half was ready to pass. It was a turnover, and then those beach and cliff offloads and handling looked superb. But as they've done all day, Kenilworth has scrambled. They've worked really hard. They've got back, and now they've got the ball again. As we know that if they can move the ball with a little bit of width, get the ball into Yallop's hands, he can create some danger out wide. A couple of changes for Peach and Cliff. Yuji Westmacott has come on on the right wing. So that man with number 40 on his back there, Charlie Delaghi. He's gone from try scoring winger to scrub half, which is where he started in that winning semi final for Beach and Cliff. So no hands, no no hands on that from Yallop. Step blue. Turn that over this time. Tommy Gould with the yellow cap. Mackenzie Graham. Just said he was trying to force the offload that time, but held on. Will Morris. That's Wes McCott. He's only just come on the field of play. It's a good first touch for him. Holding on. Tackle is complete. And a judge to have held on for too long. Really good one on one tackle from Carter there. As you say, uh, Westmacott's just come on. He looked like he's got some pace there. The fullback made a great one-on-one -on -one tackle. What surprised me, though, was from that scrum, with the ball in hand, Kenilworth have looked dangerous, especially with the um, with the backs in Yallop. But they've kicked it straight away back to Beecham, who have shown they're happy with the ball. And I wouldn't kick it to them unless you're kicking into space, because they are able to just keep the ball and wear you down until yeah, they actually find some space. So hopefully, we see Kenilworth keeping the ball in hand. There is some, are some spaces on this massive pitch for them, so they've just got to look after the ball a little bit better because when they do that, they look dangerous. And there's plenty of spirit in this team. They were 15 nil down in the semi-final before coming back to win 32-17. They used to be in behind, and that won't phase them. Kenzie Gray in there, just making a nuisance of himself on the breakdown, dragging Kenilworth towards the touchline winning the line out just under 15 minutes of this remaining it's the under 15 bars competition next up the under 15 cap with gift versus manchester grammar school hold there we go get in get in there we go ruthless confident devaney throwing duties the target once again back. referee happy that's one goal that one's gone backwards and the bouncing ball slightly opens up the Kenilworth defense no, blue. No. Will Morris is in there back foot. Charlie Delaghi waits and goes to the blind side Mackenzie Graham Again, frees the hands back and thinks a little foot, bit better of it oh burst straight through taking advantage of any gaps beach and clip Away, Blue! There's the kick for the corner. One for Eugene Westmacott to chase. Will Morris is busted a gut to get there as well. It bounces to him and he gets his second try. Cameron Holden got a terrible bounce of that ball. Will Morris sprinted onto it, put the pressure on him and got the reward for that pressure and that puts Beach and Cliff in control here 24-14 and an absolute nightmare there for Cameron Holden yeah you see Will Morris we talked about in the first half never give up give up on a chase always chase hard you never know what's going to happen with the bounce of a rugby ball Will Morris has done that all day long he's ran hard he's chased everything down and he's got his just rewards but again, we saw in the first half with Yallop chasing a ball for Kenilworth. And Morris has done that. Pretty just yeah, always chase because you never know what's going to happen with the bounce the of the ball. Blue. Well, it was a smart kick, but they say a kick's only as good as its chase. And three Beach and Cliff players absolutely busting a gut to get to that one. Well, Cameron Holden, not an awful lot he could have done there. Numbers 11, 4, and 9. Jack Turian, so 24, 14. I mean, 11, even if nine, Cameron Holden had have got something on this, there wouldn't have been a lot he could do. It was a smart kick from De Glanville. 
great kick. Even if he gets that ball, he's going to be probably driven back over the line and uh, Beecham would have got the scrum. You just see the difference in the kicks from there and the kick earlier from Kenilworth. He's kicked it in behind, he's made the ball bounce, and he's been under pressure. Okay, so two very different kicks. If you're going to kick, make it land, make it put the opposition under pressure rather than just kicking straight down their throats. So we need a response now. And also, that's something a little bit different from Beach and Cliff too. They've run the ball from everywhere and showed that there's plenty of versatility in that side. They lead 24-10. Just under 12 minutes and this under 15 Vars final Blue remain. Blue. They're straight back on the front foot now. Keeping it tight, driving up towards the halfway line. Just trying to free the hands of free Westmacott there. Spilt forward, so Kenilworth. Oh, what a massive handoff that is from Yallop. Such a powerful ball handler, but he's out in touch. He's deceptively strong, isn't he? He is. He's wiry, isn't he? He doesn't look that big from here, but he's very proud. He's got... That's really unlucky if he gets those hands for his way, but yeah. He's also one of those, sometimes just pure aggression comes into things. He's like, get off me. <laughs> yeah, he wants, he wants to carry. He's then just got to try and stay, try and stay in the field. But another tackle, I'm really impressed with Mackenzie Graham. He's everywhere. He's carrying, he's making tackles. He's looking to offload when he can. But again, another good position. They really need a score, Peachy Cliff, to get back in this game. Tom Rogers has come on at replacement scrum half for Kenilworth. Oh, and that's a lovely line through the middle. Finn Yallop again. He's got his head down and there's no one with him. Now he does free the hands. A rare venture towards the 22 for Kenilworth in search of the score that'll get them back into this final. Once again, it's that man, Finn Yallop, and they've earned the penalty. They've gone quickly as well. Joe Marsden, try scoring captain already in this match. And this a fantastic response from Kenilworth. 10 points behind with 10 minutes remaining. Dominic Rogers putting a little bit of width on it. Yallop gets that handoff in again, stays on his feet well and finds the offload. Oh, suggested that was high. There's a penalty advantage coming. Will Wolvine. Kenilworth. Just taking the heat out so Will Wolvike can reset at first receiver. Oh, excellent tackle there from Beach and Cliff, stopping the ball carrier dead. And the referee brings them back for the penalty. And this is a huge opportunity for Kenilworth now. Yeah, they're in a great position here. But what was really clever about the move where Yallop made the break. They did the same move about six, seven minutes ago when they actually passed it out the back, back to Wolvine out wide. They played exactly the same move. Beach would probably think the same thing's coming, but instead of going out the back, the number 12, Pepe, clever pass has hit Yallop and he's bust through the hole. And what was quite nice then, he actually kept his hands alive, he kept the ball moving. Great position now for a line out when they're guaranteed to win the ball. Can they get over that try line from the drive or maybe hit Yallop up the middle? There's a lot of space out wide. Look how narrow that beach in defence is. Connor Poole Whoa. finds his man, and Kenilworth set the drive. Well, Five metres out now, but Beach and Cliff prevent the first wave at least. He would be in. Jess loses out there, and now Beach and Cliff can run it from inside their own 22. There are numbers there. Will Morris in search of a hat-trick, puts the pass over the top, great pace from Josh Carter, up over the halfway line, one tackle to beat, and that tackle's made, gets a glorious offload away, and Dan Boyle for the corner, just brought down a metre short by Yallop, heroic last cast defending, stopping a 100-metre try for Beach and Cliff, surely it's coming, and it does. Well, Kenilworth missed the opportunity, and Beach and Cliff You've said how comfortable they are on the ball. I think that's the hat-trick for Will Morris. That is composure beyond many under 15 teams. If we see a better try than that today, then we're in for a treat. Because to go from their own line, there was good handing, there was offloading. I think there's an offload here just about to come. Great tackle, but look at it, he gets his hands free, throws the offload, another crack into the tackle here. 
thinks he might have actually slowed it down, might be able to get it, but again, Will Morris is there. He's shown his speed earlier. Now he's shown his power. Great positioning for the ref, well done. Richard Horton should be quick enough to get there. Sure. But that was an absolute gem of a try from their own try line. Monteria just misses. But now Kenilworth, that's three scores. But let's take a look again. Will Morris, that's a lovely pass. Lovely two, pass two there. defenders with it. And we haven't even seen the what the four or five passes that led to that right from their line. But this lovely little pass there is outstanding. Finney Allen, huge credit to him, by the way. He's had a great game today. He's been outstanding. But again, we said for Kenilworth, they were on the try line. They had to look after the ball. Fair play to the beach in forwards. They disrupted it, won the ball, and then the backs showed what they can do as well. Well, a hat trick for Will Morris as well. What a game he's had. They've all come in quite oh, quick yeah, succession yeah. in the second Move. half. Move. Thank you. He's involved with the Bath Academy, and on performances like today, you can certainly see why. Yeah, he's, seen to have it always, but he's very quick. He gives his all, which is what you want, and he's actually good with the ball as well. So maybe we'll be seeing his name in the future. Make you get your thinking cap on, Sam, because uh, in a couple of minutes' time, I'm going to have to ask you for a man of the match. I know it's always difficult on days like today, but just so it's in your thought process. Kenilworth 14, Beach and Cliff 29. I'm not sure if we'll be able to see it, but what was so important to that um, try, we talked, I talked about him earlier, Mackenzie Graham, how he smashes it up, he makes his tackles. He got the ball and he just did a quick deft pass straight away from contact on his line. Most forwards would have just smashed it up. He moved it, the ball was suddenly in space, and then the backs just flew the length of the pitch. Well, Beach and Cliff marching forward now. Confidence absolutely flowing through them. Oh, and a break up the blind side as well. It's all going Beach and Cliff's way at the moment. The tackle just about doing enough to bring down the ball carrier. The Kenilworth getting hands. Well, looking like they were going to get hands on the ball, but it comes back Beach and Cliff's way before being knocked on. That final try, it's just kind of knocked the wind out of the sails of Kenilworth, really. He took the lead in the second half through an excellent Finn Yallop try. Let's take another look at this break. Just a little gap, great awareness from Beach and Cliff. James Rowe just doing enough. Another really important one on one tackle. He's made a few of those today, right at the back. Kenner with the scrambled brilliantly. Whenever you think sort of Beach and Cliff are away, they've managed to get number, even for the score, they made them have to really work and make that extra, extra ruck, extra pass for the score. But as you said, that's a knock blow, knockout blow almost. That length of the try. There's been two of those, two sucker oh. punches, and it's tough to come back from Fine. any level, but especially kids, you feel it so, so much more. Well, Kenilworth put it boot to ball. It's cross field over the winger. Well, to gather that has Yuji West McCott. Oh, goodness me. Finn Yallop, no surprise there. He was the <laughs> one putting the pressure on. You just see the difference on the kick chase there. Like they obviously knew they were going to do the kick, but there was just the winger chasing. When we saw Beach and kick earlier, you had the centre, the fullback, and the wing all going. So the fullback should have been chasing there. The outside centre and the winger should have all been putting pressure on the um, Beach and winger. And then if you tried that offload, all three of them there to gather it. Final three minutes. Fine. So Archie Robertson is putting a good shift on the left wing. He's going to be able to put his feet up until the celebrations. De Glanville finds Morris in space again. He's got men outside him. That's a lovely flat pass, and this is going to be another score. From tries to assists, Beach and Cliff up over 30 points. 
34-14. Seems a harsh scoreline on Kenilworth. However, some of the quality in this Beach and Cliff side in the second half really has been special. That is a beautiful pass from De Glanville. Beautiful. Look at this, though. He's got the ball in two hands. He's always looking to pass. He's not trying to be greedy. He's looking for his support. That's a, a real sign of a class player there. A lot of schoolboys, a lot of adults would have got the ball there thinking, I've scored three, I'm going to go and get another one. He was never thinking that. He was always looking for support. Ball in two hands. That's a beautifully worked first phase. The coach will be licking his lips with that. They've worked on that all year and it comes off in a ticket and final. Yuji Westmacott with the try as well. Came on on the right wing, went in field looking for work. That pass is delicious from the Glanville. And as I say, ball in two hands. Again, look at them though. There's three Beach and Cliff players there all around the ball, all looking for the try. Well, Sam Howard, brilliant performances all around the pitch today. We can have a conversation about it if you like, or you can just give us your man of the match. Uh, there's a few contenders. I think the scoreline is harsh on Kenilworth. I think they've been in the game up to the last five minutes. And for them, Yallop has been outstanding outside centre. The Glanville has run the show brilliantly and looked talented at 10. I've been impressed with Mackenzie Graham at six, but you can't argue with someone that scores a hat-trick in a final at Twickenham, sets up another try, has made great tackles. Will Morris, 13 for Beach and Cliffs, is my man of the match. He's been outstanding today. I don't think anyone can argue with that decision. Some lovely tries, but not just poachers' tries, his all round contribution to this under 15 Vars victory for Beach and Cliff will be talked about by the players, squad members, and coaches for quite some time. Final few seconds here then of a, of a much better match than this scoreline would suggest actually. Absolutely, you sort of just look at the scoreline, you think, oh, Beach and Cliff have absolutely run away with that. And they have at the end in the last few minutes, but Kenilworth has been in the game. So they've got the opening score in the second half. They've got a lot of good players. They, they haven't given up. Beach and Cliff are just very, very good. And as we said, throughout the pitch, they're forwards, they're backs, they can, they've got a kicking game, they've got a running game. They're a very, very good side. And it's, as we said beforehand, to win the semi-final without five of these players yeah. was ominous. And at half-time, I said, I thought maybe they'd be a bit further ahead. And it's a testament to Kenworth's players and coaches. Five. But this has been a thoroughly absorbing Set. first game today. And if the rest of the games are like this, we're in for a treat. We certainly are. The captain, Jack Turian, goes from the base of the scrum and kicks towards his supporters. The referee's full-time whistle goes, and Beach and Cliff are the under-15 Vars champions. They've defeated Kenilworth 36 points to 14 here at Twickenham. And Sam, you know exactly how this feels, both as somebody who walks away with the trophy and without it. Um, Thanks let's, for reminding me. <laughs> well, you, you know me. Uh, let's talk about the winners first. Fantastic moments for them, and that's a brilliant performance on the biggest of stages. Oh, they've been outstanding. And as a coach, you just want your team to go out and perform and play how you know they can and how they have all year. And they've and they've done that. Like we, were, a couple of our wins, we weren't great. We just sort of got through the game. But we had another one where we were outstanding. And when the players go out and perform to their absolute potential, that's all you can ask for as a coach. And those Beach and Cliff boys have done that throughout the game. Um, all of them could be very proud of their performance. Well, let's take a look at the summary of the game. De Glanville scored the first try, and he's been class all day. Yeah, yeah, with boot, with ball in hand. Just see where he comes from. He's a little bit hidden. He looks like he's going in. He suddenly takes an outline, straightens up, under the post but again real composure from the from the handlers Daniel Boy take takes it to the line perfect timing of the pass Kenilworth came back Marsden the captain big ball carry at number eight just bulldozed over and that's what his team needed at the time to get them back into this one excellent response he carried all day long always taking defenders with him and again, put them straight back into the game. And they had ascendancy here, and were actually on top of the game for a large amount of the first half. 
Well, one of the key things that you mentioned about Beechercliff was their composure. They were composed in defence, and this was a great outlet to put them back into the lead. Yeah, really against the running play here. Kenilworth had the ball and had the ascendancy for about five or six minutes, and then Delaghi just gets the ball, a little bit fortunate, but Craig, he takes his opportunity really well, and there was no stopping him from 80 metres. Yeah, really versatile player, Charlie Delaghi, happy in the back three or at scrum half. He actually replaced Nathan Clark at scrum half later in the game. This was Yallop's try to put Kenilworth into the lead for the first and only time in the game, and it's a, it's a defeat for him today. However, he can take a lot from this performance, as can that man, Will Morris, the man of the match. Yeah, both 13s, absolutely superb. Delaghi scored straight after half-time, and here we see, as we said, never give up on a kick, all chase. Again, we'll probably see there's one, two, three players all around the ball. Will Morris gets his second there. And then look at that pass from six. Perfect timing, perfect timing, perfect timing, perfect timing. It's absolutely, it's what you're out there on the training paddock. It's what you're doing all year. And oh, what an offload. And they put it into practice on the big stage at Twickenham. And like, also Josh Carter there, all the passes came, but he was the one who knew when to straighten up, knew when to take the contact on. And that was the hat-trick try for Will Morris. And there's the coach's dream. First phase move. You actually, I don't think, I think it's um, Daniel Boyle who runs on a dummy line, which holds so many defenders. That is a great line. De Glanville puts him across him. That is just, like, they would have done that thousands of times in training. And then to, as you say, do it on the big stage in a final at Twickenham. That is an absolute dream of a try. Well, Kenilworth, receive their silver medals and, and, and a tough one for them today and I think it'll take a long time for them to realise actually we've achieved a lot this season, this is the furthest any Kenilworth side has gone in the national competition, positives for them and, and despite the disappointment today that's, that's a great season for Kenilworth. Massively, they've got to Twickenham which in itself is a huge achievement, they'll be disappointed now obviously and you, and you want them to be disappointed but as the, the coaches will be saying that they've gone out there and they performed and they've lost to a very good side. The last thing, you don't want to come off the pitch and think, oh, we might have done that. There's no bones. Beecham were the better team on the day and they played brilliantly. But Kenilworth, they were in the game probably until about the last five or six minutes. They scored some good tries. They defended manfully. They were just up against a very good team who played very well on the day. So they should be disheartened. They played, they've done themselves, their families, the school very proud and I'm sure everyone associated with that Kenilworth team will be very proud of that performance. Well, what about this side getting their gold medals? Then Beach and Cliff, it's the first time they've got to a major final. It's at under-15s level. They've won in quite some style, really. Some glorious rugby played by these under-15s. And, and what a day for them, what a moment, and, and what a performance. Yeah, it's one of the highlights of the boys. They love walking up those steps. They love getting the trophy and in a minute they like the captain always gets it last then he has to sort of shuffle into the middle <laughs> and then they'll all lift up the cup and go mental for a little bit um, and they, they that's one of the highlights for the boys they love this little bit and it's great to see all the parents you can see in there taking photos it's a lovely moment for everyone involved in beach and cliff now and of course this is an under 15s team it's obviously a very special group of players What's the next step for them? Because there are so many challenges as you move into the, the under-18s competition. I don't, I don't fully know what the system is down at Beach. I think it's an academy school, so they will stay there and, and be in the under-8. We'll probably go. I think they're an ace academy, so I would have thought a lot of those will go down that route. So I don't know whether they stay as a school and go together. Here we go. Beach and Cliff lift the trophy, and they are the RFU under-15 Vars champions. The smiles on the faces tell you all you need to know. They've come to Twickenham and given their very, very best. 36-14, they are victors. And that's a moment that this group of players will remember for the rest of their lives. Oh, it's a lovely moment, even though I've got nothing to do with them. You get goosebumps just seeing the unadulterated Aldrady joy from their faces. It's absolutely brilliant. But as you say, if these boys stay together as a school, then they're going to be competing at under, six, under 18 level in a few years' time. Congratulations to Beach and Cliff. They have won trophy number one of today, the under 15 bars.
We'll be back after the break with the Under-15 Cup Final. It's Whitgift School versus Manchester Grammar.